One Pesach, these are words, sayings by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. One Passover, Rabbi Chaim Avram, who was one of the sons of the Alter Rebbe, he went to his brother, who was the middle Rebbe, another one of the sons of the first Rebbe, to say good Yom Tov. Rabbi Chaim Avram said that the Alter Rebbe once said on Pesach, a person does not offer guests food and drink, but the guest can help himself. <clears throat> That's a custom. You visit people and you put food out, but you don't say come and eat because the person will be embarrassed because a lot of people are very <clears throat> strict with themselves not to eat anything on Passover that they didn't prepare, that they don't know exactly where it came from. So there are Passover. Some people are crazy severe on Passover. Next we have, so therefore don't offer people to eat. It's just a custom. <clears throat> no novel, but let them take for themselves. Here we have, that's today, now tomorrow. It was the custom in Lubavitch to stay awake on the night of the seventh day of Passover, and also to stay awake on the night of Shavuot, and also on Hoshana Rabbah. Hoshana Rabbah is near the end of the holiday of, Pas of uh, Sukkot. By the age of nine, says the previous Rebbe, by the age of nine, I did not sleep on the seventh of Passover, you should try to study Torah the whole night, whatever you want to. Study Torah the whole entire night. That is tomorrow, now the day after. The Baal Shem Tov used to eat three festival meals on Achron Shal Pesach. Here in Israel, we eat them on Shvi Shal Pesach. The Baal Shem Tov called the third meal, Mashiach's meal, the festival meal of the Mashiach. <coughs> Shvi Shal Pesach. Shvi Shal Pesach, that's when the Jews totally got out of Egypt. That's when they split this. And also, like I explained to you, the sea split means it was a big revelation of God. <clears throat> and that's really a fore, foretaste of the Mashiach, when the world will be filled with the knowledge of God. It's in the Haftorah of Achron Shal Pesach, the second day of Passover, this amazing uh, prophecy of Isaiah, which is in chapter 10 and 11, <clears throat> about how the world will be filled with the knowledge of God and the lion will lay, lay, be together with the, 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 the wolf, and the, the lion will be together with a sheep. And the Baal Shem Tov called this third of the Mashiach Suda. This is the day of the Mashiach Suda because on this day, the radiance the illumination of the Mashiach light shines openly. Huh? In 1906, that was the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe's father. That was the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was the sixth Rebbe. The fifth Rebbe in 1906 <clears throat> was the Passover for Yeshiva Tom Chetamimim in Lubavitch. The students ate the Passover meal all together in the study hall. There were 310 students there, and they sat at 18 tables. They all used to eat the meal together, Passover. And this is the meal of the seventh day of Passover, and really the eighth day of Passover. My father, the Rebbe, ate the meal of Achron Shal Pesach with all these Shiva students. He ordered that everyone should drink four cups of wine, and we also eat matzah. Matzah. You don't have to eat three matzah, you eat whatever you do, but four cups of wine they drank. And then he said, this is the Suda meal of the Mashiach. And that's when it became popular for, but there were others that did it also. The Baba Sali, he also make, he used to make the, the uh, Mashiach's meal. Great. And so that is the three. Now I'll tell you a story. Okay. One minute, I wrote these stories on. Here we go. Okay, I'll tell you a, a, a Sephardic story and a, a Hasidic story. 